So Apple just had an event to announce the first Macs based on their own silicon. And this is massive for video editors. Let's find out why. So first Apple talked about the chip that powers these new Macs. It's called the M1, and essentially it provides more performance whilst consuming less power. And for video editors, this is huge, because it means we can still do those high performance, intense tasks that we need to do, such as 3D rendering, noise reduction, or simply exporting a project, all in a machine that consumes less power, which means the battery life will be longer. So what does that mean for video-centric software? Well, Apple actually gave us some figures. So in Final Cut, certain processes will be six times faster, while in the 3D rendering software Cinema 4D, we can expect three times faster performance. And I can see a future not so far away, where you could take one of these low power, high performance machines on set and be editing on the fly. Anything that speeds up our workflow as filmmakers and content creators saves us time and money. So I'm excited to see how Apple develops this in the future. Next, let's talk about the three Macs that Apple announced. So the first Mac announced with the M1 chip was the MacBook Air, which compared to the previous generation, offers 3.5 times performance on the CPU and five times performance on the GPU. Apple also mentioned it could edit multiple 4K streams in ProRes. Now this is an interesting one because ProRes as a format is typically quite easy on a machine. I'd be more interested to hear about the performance with compressed formats such as H.264 and H.265 as these formats are typically what most cameras shoot in. They also mentioned that there would be massive speed improvements for anything that uses machine learning such as Final Cut's new Smart Conform feature and all this with up to 18 hours battery which sounds amazing. I'd be interested to see how much of that 18 hours you can get whilst doing video editing. If it manages anything over 8 hours while editing, this is huge because it means you could take a small, thin, light laptop, chuck it in your bag and do edits on the go. Oh and by the way, this laptop has no fan, so they're managing to have these massive performance gains in a laptop that'll stay cool. Another plus. The second Mac they announced with the new chip is the Mac Mini, which has three times performance on the CPU and six times performance on the GPU compared to the last model. Now previously on the Mac Mini, the CPU was decent, but the GPU held it back as it was an integrated Intel chip. Now with the six times faster GPU, this should mean that the new Mac Mini is an excellent machine for moderate video editing and effects work. And the third Mac they announced with the new chip is a 13 inch MacBook Pro, which compared to the previous model has 2.8 times CPU and five times GPU performance. In terms of video editing performance, Apple mentioned being able to play 8K ProRes in DaVinci Resolve without dropping frames. Again, ProRes is quite an easy format for the machine to play back, but the fact that the machine is playing back 8K without issue is pretty impressive. Now, in contrast to the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro does come with a fan, but Apple said this allows it to maintain high clock speeds for an extended amount of time, all whilst providing 17 to 20 hours of battery life. Again, I'm not sure how much of this battery life you'd get whilst video editing, but it's still impressive. These new Macs with Apple's M1 chip offering massive leaps in performance, all while managing to keep the machine cool and offer long battery life. And particularly with the new MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, we might be able to take a machine with excellent video editing performance wherever we go. So what do you think about the new Macs with the M1 chip? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, stay safe and goodbye.